with that as a lady getting married in a white wedding dress and a man in a suit. So she'll be predominantly white, whereas he's kind of 50-50. And now that the bachelor is sort out of view, the VM can take you across to the next interesting animals that we actually stopped initially to view before the battaliers came onto the scene. And so happy to see the troop of baboons. It's the first time that I'm actually sharing them with you on film. I've seen them very seldomly since I've been here. And good to have them back around. They came onto the property kind of early Feb and they disappeared for a week or two and look at how comfortable they are clambering along. I'm not sure what they're feeding on. It is a marula tree but as you can see there's not much in it and it could be that they are feeding on insects. This is a dead marula tree and it was killed by elephants. Evidently it was not pushed over, but if VM just pans down slightly, you'll notice at the bottom of the tree it has been ring barked. So all of the bark has been removed, therefore cutting off the transport system from the roots up to the rest of the plants. And this will kill a tree, even if it's a very thin strip around the circumference of a tree. If that bark layer is removed, the tree will die. So it could be that they're feeding on insects, I'm guessing, that are now taking advantage of this tree. And they are omnivorous, the baboons, so not strictly vegetarians, and they will even catch and kill small antelope and birds, as well as other small prey items. I'm just going to creep forward a little bit because there's also some other animals here that I'd love to show you. Not just the baboons. to some kudu with a beautiful big male following closely behind and it is getting to that time of the year where the antelope will start mating and this is so that they can give birth in summer after their gestation period throughout the winter. So he's following closely, doesn't seem to have any competition from any other bulls, but I'm sure as the females come closer to being in full season, they will attract more males. And this guy is potentially here a little bit early. I'm just going to try and loop ahead of them quickly. And while we do that, I just want to recap on that incredible sighting we had with the puff adder. And Really interesting, after all of the excitement, myself and Vim were chatting and trying to discuss and break down why it was potentially moving around. They are predominantly nocturnal snakes, but interestingly enough, with a bit of research, I've also established that they breed in the middle of winter, and judging by the way he was moving around, I'm wondering if he wasn't on the scent trail of a female. Ooh who look like they're running up to the baboons playfully. This is going to be an interesting shot. Let me just try and get into position quickly. So yeah, I think potentially that snake was on the trail of a female. But either way, wonderful to see it on the move. Look at this for a shot. Beautiful. The kudu really are running around playfully amongst these baboons. There they go. Look at that, jumping for joy. And I'm just going to creep forward a little bit more to see what those kudu continue to do. <laughs> there they come. We don't need to go anywhere. 
Sorry, dude. And who knows exactly what it is that's induced this excitement, but you can see they're running around playfully and providing us with some look at that. <laughs> That is incredible and great work on the camera, Vim, because it's not easy to follow them as they're pranking about like this. The male kid who must be wondering what he's got himself involved in here. Maybe, maybe bitten off more than he can chew. And it is behavior that's fairly common of kudu. They do like to elevate themselves on termite mounds look at <laughs> that is incredible and the individual there was pronking up to the baboons playfully I am going to continue to try and reposition accordingly to get us into a good spot hold on one second Maybe it's because the kudu feels safe, knowing with all these baboons around, they've got so many eyes and ears that they can rely on to detect any predators, and maybe that's given them the opportunity to let their guard down and play around. Here they come. Now it's the last two that are left on the termite mine that I'm sure are going to follow the rest of the herd shortly. So we're going to have one last shot of them before they disappear into some thicker vegetation. You can probably hear a bird calling in the background and that was a crested barbet that you would have heard. Is my impersonation to give you an idea of which frequency I was tuning into there. I'm surprised that these two haven't followed the herd more closely but we'll keep an eye on them as I'm sure at some stage they are going to run down from that termite mound and jump across the road but if they do VM is ready for action in the meantime from myself thanks so much for joining us this morning it's been a morning with some of the smaller critters not uh, too much of the big game or although having said that Brent did have a great sighting with the elephants to start off with so one of those mornings with no predators really and that's fine because we've been blessed with some other great sightings, just the brief sighting of the baboon and these kudu have been really interesting as well as the battalier soaring above us. So hopefully you all enjoyed it as much as we did. Of course the snake, I could have forgotten about the puff adder which was a highlight for me and possibly the best snake sighting or definitely the best snake sighting that I've been able to share with you. So I hope you enjoyed that and well done to VM on camera and Nikki in final control. And we will see you all this afternoon for the next adventure.
So we will stay live a little bit over broadcast just to keep an eye on these kudu. I'm sure it won't take long before they decide to head off and follow the rest of the herd. 